to the free range human show of choice your daily dose of reality radio the realest show on the radio the most incendiary morning talk show in central mississippi this is the clay edwards show i am of course clay edwards broadcasting live here in the clay edwards show.com studios on a cloudy monday morning here in central mississippi if you want to chime in the Guns and Gear text line, 601-8, no, I'm sorry, that's the phone line. The phone, well, we'll start there. The phone line, <laughs> the hotline, 601-879-0002. You got something you want to get off your chest this morning? If I stumble into talking about something that interests you, I would love to get your opinion on it. Agree or disagree. Either way, good with me. The Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944, 769-241. 1944. Let me clear this up, something up real quick about the text line. That only goes to this show. It doesn't go, it doesn't go to any other show on the station. Not Jameson's, not Kim's, uh, no Stevens, even though it's no longer with us for now. Uh, none of the other shows. So the Guns and Gear text line is a Clay Edwards show exclusive. Uh, everybody kind of does their own thing here when it comes to that. Some guys don't really feel like messing with it, and some do, and whatnot. Uh, I like it. It works good for my show. I like being in t- constant communication with guys. I like giving you all a source to be able to send me stories and opinions, and it helps me on a slow news day, getting you guys to text in. Some of y'all are shy. You don't like calling. Text is easier. I get it. Hell, I stole the text line idea from uh, one of our local sports talk guys. You know, it works good. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at SaveJXM, it's a good way to get in touch with me there as well. And I'm, I'm not the most uh, prolific twi- tweeter. I am more of a Facebook guy when it comes to that kind of stuff, more of an Instagrammer, more of a video person on platforms like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. But I do try to post to Twitter a couple times a day. But uh, you can definitely communicate with me there. You can tag me. You can send me a direct message, whatever. I do try to <clears throat> reply to everything. I don't have the notifications turned on there because it can be a bit of a cesspool. And I try to block as much negativity out of my life as possible. And Twitter is definitely a very negative place. All right. Uh, congratulations to Stephen Detroska. He had a great run here uh, with his morning show, Liberty Wake Up Call. Hate to see him go. Always like having a live lead in. I think it's better than having national lead in, and I like getting a chance to chop, chop it up with Stephen here in the mornings. We will miss him, but I, I don't think he's gone forever. I think uh, I think he'll be back through here, you know, before you know it. So, kudos to Stephen for a great run, and uh, looking forward to having his opinions and whatnot here on our show again soon. Over the weekend, <clears throat> it started Cinco de Mayo was a Cinco de Massacre in Mississippi. Uh, over the the Cinco de Mayo holiday Friday, our our Democrats in this state do not know how to handle day drinking. They they just can't do it. They can't do it. And it ain't just day drinking. It's all it's everything around here. And I, you know, let's see, we had three black nightclub mass shootings. In the state of Mississippi. And people were all mad at me for pointing out the fact they were black nightclubs. You know how I know they were black nightclubs? Because they didn't parade the picture of the shooter all over the media. Or the shooters. When it's, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about when is it a good time? When is it acceptable to discuss a perp's race? And when is it not? We're going to talk about that later in the show. But we're going to run through the news first. You had 12 people shot and an additional three killed. Or maybe I should reprioritize that. You had three people killed and an additional 12 shot Friday night at Jackson, not Jackson, at Mississippi nightclubs, Ocean Springs, Natchez, and Vicksburg. One dead. 20-year-old or so, 21-year-old down in Ocean Springs. Six additional people shot. Two dead in Natchez, teenagers. 
and two shot, and then four shot over in Vicksburg is junks. No deaths. And I saw all this and I said to myself, Jackson, Mississippi ain't going to be outdone. Our Democrats said, the, we accept your challenge. And f- Saturday night, there was only, I say only, I don't mean that uh, facetiously, but there was only one homicide, but I think there was about 10 different shootings Saturday night in Jackson. Let me see here. I got the numbers. This was this was Saturday night. It says they're busy in Jackson tonight. Five separate shootings, one fatality, and it's not even 10 o'clock yet. You may be asking yourself, Clay, what is the homicides up to in Jackson this year? You know, there's been a ton of shootings, but not a lot of homicides. And, hey, that is a good thing. I, I 100% contribute that to the Capitol Police and the expanded police presence in Jackson. We're going to talk about Capitol Police here. We're not Capitol Police. We're going to talk about uh, uh the cap. Yeah, yeah, about the Capitol Police later. Uh, the expansion of the CCID, HB ten twenty, all that. We're up to thirty two homicides <clears throat> in the city, which uh, it's middle of May. I mean, it's full week into May. Today's May eighth. That that's less than ten a month. So. That that is an improvement. Last year at this time, we were uh, let's see. I have those numbers readily available. Twenty twenty two is the purple one there. Let me see. Through April thirtieth is uh, kind of where my chart goes through here. We were at forty one, so we're nine off at minimum nine. Let's just say ten off last year's pace which was off in the previous year. So going down, that's a positive trend. Getting hot in the studio. Well, I'm getting hot. One or the other had to turn the air down. Let's talk about HB 1020 for a second while we're on the subject. I'm, and I'm going to get back to these mass shootings. <clears throat> so that uh, parts of it has been stopped by a judge. And, you know, and I, I find it interesting. The very people in the communities who are against HB 1020, who are against a safer Jackson, who are against a more efficient judicial system in Hines County, who are against criminals being in jail, are, of course, criminals, politicians, Democrat politicians, the black delegation and David Blunt, and these pulpit pimps in Jackson. These are the people against HB 1020 in a safer Jackson. Interesting that the pulpit pimps, a.k.a. the preachers, the Jackson politicians, and the black delegation down at the Capitol, and the dope boys and criminals are the ones against HB 1020. The normies, black, white, other in Jackson, Democrat, conservative, whatever, are all for it. They're all for it. The only people against it are a bunch of internet rabble-rousers, outside agitators of sort, like your Brad Franklins of the world, your Pastor Pickett's, your Chakwe Antarlamumba's, and all these other pulpit pimps. You know, I find it real funny that some of these uh, preachers, who's the guy over there at New Horizon, Crudup? Saying his name right, Crudup, Crudup? Uh, publicly against HB 1020, but wanted to make damn sure New Horizon was inside the CCID. That's a bit hypocritical. That's a bit hypocritical. If I'm a Jackson normie, I want to know why my safety isn't important to you, but dope boys protection is why y'all run a cover for dope boys and criminals at the expense of my personal safety. I'd be asking these pastors, these questions. Y'all know I, a lot of these churches in Jackson are just scams. Anyway, I ain't got no problem calling them out. I don't go to them. 
A lot of them are just scams. Tax shelters. Look at, you know, I went back through the Save Jackson archives over the weekend. And I went through a bunch of my old photos. And you can go see, I posted a bunch of them on the Save Jackson Facebook page yesterday. You can go look at them. Most all that abandoned property on there. And I only hit South Jackson. I didn't even get into downtown, West Jackson, North Jackson, any of that. Most of the abandoned property in Jackson, if you go look on the tax rolls, is owned by these black churches in Jackson. They get it donated to them. Because you, you, you could say no. You don't have to take it. You could say no. But they take it. And they do nothing with it. It turns into being overran by vagrants, pimps, prostitutes, drugs, all of the above. White meth heads pushing all their belongings up and down around it in a buggy. You know, to Thomas's point the other day, Friday I think it was, when he told me I needed to get them white people off the corners on North Side or Meadowbrook or wherever it was, North Jackson. Once that once that bunch is taken back over, once they out roaming the streets, it's a wrap. Put a wrap on it. It's over. Ain't no ain't no gentrification. Ain't no saving. Ain't no resurgence. Ain't no none of that. It is rotted from the inside out. From the core out. But anyway. I'm just curious why the very people who are supposed to have your best interest at heart, the preachers, the politicians, why are they on the same team as the dope boys and the criminals in Jackson? Could it be that they are the criminals and the dope boys? We'll be right back. This is the Clay Edwards Show on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. First one of the week right there. Come on back. Welcome back in here. Pour that nice warm cup of coffee. Honk that horn at that bad driver. Stick that finger out the window and give him the bird. Tell him to get out your way. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. You're mad as hell and you don't know why. This segment is going to be brought to you by A1 Gear and Auto. My buddy Justin and his team out there on 49 South right there in Florence, Mississippi. That's A1 gear and auto for all of your differential repair needs that's what they specialize in right there but man they do so much more than that it got up to dang near 90 degrees yesterday i was sweating and i was so glad my air conditioner worked but i got to thinking about what if it didn't these are the things you think about when it's hot outside i talked to my mom over at her house that upstairs air has been out for about two weeks now <laughs> home warranty it's, it's it's better than having to pay for it but they don't always uh, work in a timely fashion. Anyhow, I digress. If your air is uh, on the fritz in your vehicle, A1 Gear and Auto can get it taken care of. Get over there, see Justin and the team. Let them get it diagnosed. Right? Maybe it's just a leak. Maybe just low in Freon. Maybe you need a compressor. They can figure it all out there. And there's so many other moving parts when it comes to air conditioners. It could be your vent doors, all kind of stuff. Especially in Ford trucks. So... Let them get it taken care of for you and get you on the road in a nice, cool vehicle. Again, whether your check engine lights are on or you need your rear end replaced, they can do it all. A1 Gear and Auto, everything except diesel engine repair. And again, they specialize in your rear end, differential transfer case, stuff of that nature. You can find them on 49 South in Florence. Give them a call today, 601-939-1060. A1 Gear and Auto. All right, where did we leave off? We were talking about pulpit pimps, abandoned property, the real bread and butter of the whole Save Jackson platform. The one thing that really, calling these folks out is what really put me on the map uh, with all that local anger addicts. Because, you know, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to question them. But that's what we do here. We question all that stuff. So let's go back a couple days here also to Friday. I have been on the it feels like it's been a month since I've been on the radio. So much has happened. If you follow me on social media, you've seen this. 
So Thursday night, Friday morning, technically Friday morning, the Cinco de Mayo, a high-speed pursuit popped off in Pearl, Mississippi with what has to be two of the dumbest criminals in the history of dumb criminals. So dumb, in fact, that they were last week's effed around and found out grand champions of the week. Two brothers. I don't even know their names. Two brothers were at the Flying J in Pearl. I mean, you got to know. You got to know better. You can't pee in Rankin County in Pearl. You can't be in Pearl effing around in a stolen car with no tag at one in the morning. You can't do all of that independently, much less at one time. First off, you're out after midnight in Rankin County. That's probable cause right there. No tag. Ugh. Stupid. Not to mention the stolen car park with no tag. That's three things. That's three strikes against you. And then... And then you decide to run. They ain't got nothing else to do but chase you back into criminal safe haven. Hashtag escape to Jackson. So that's what they did. One in the morning. Stolen charger. It's always a charger. Brand new off the lot from somewhere too, by the way. Never even been registered. That's a, that is a interesting hustle there. So... And it wasn't Mac Hike. I, I confirmed that, at least not the one in Flowood. So they're on a high speed pursuit in the Chalkways criminal safe haven of Jackson, Mississippi. They end up in South Jackson, my former hometown, where they, I don't know if they T bone, rear end, head on collision, some form, fashion, or another, they smash into a 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Got six juveniles in it. All eight people. Two from the Charger. All six from the Jeep. Are beat up. I mean, it's bad. It's a bad wreck. It's a trauma scene. It's They're having to do, you know, life-saving medical stuff on the side of the road there. Several, they're all in critical condition. Several in a... Really bad shape. They're all they're all at UMMC. Uh, according to one of my sources, unconfirmed reports, one of them have died. But here's the catch: the Jeep Grand Cherokee. No, no other news source is reporting this. Nobody else in Jackson is reporting this. It was stolen. It had been carjacked a couple days earlier. So these kids out running around joyriding in a carjacked Jeep Grand Cherokee and get hit by another stolen car in the midst of a high-speed pursuit. Jackson, Mississippi has gotten so bad that you can't even ride around in a peaceful joyride in a stolen car anymore without getting T-boned and sent to the hospital by another stolen car running from the police from an entirely different town. Jackson ain't coming back. It's gone. And of course, you know, the mama's all on Facebook. My baby, he was just a good, he's a good boy. He was going to be a rocket scientist, an engineer. He was the MVP, somebody told me. Hey guys, Clay Edwards here. I want to tell you real quick about RC Lawn Care. My buddy Richard Coley is going to be the guy you need to contact for all of your lawn maintenance needs. You can reach him at 601-502-3529. They offer roof-to-curb service, blowing off the roof, gutter cleaning, basic lawn care, including mow, trim, edge, and blow, full lawn cleanup, trash removal, garden supplies delivered, pine straw installs, driveway, and sidewalk pressure washing. If grass is growing, you need RC Lawn Care mowing. Again, 601-502-3529. Richard Coley at RC Lawn Care. Proud sponsor of the Clay Edwards Show podcast. 
He wasn't, these weren't thugs. These were good kids. Bro, no, they're not. They're riding around in a carjacked vehicle. I, I, I know, I, I'm, in fact, I'm not a rocket scientist. Believe it or not. But you know what I know? I know that whoever did carjack that vehicle didn't just go give it to somebody. I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and, and make an educated guess that one of them kids carjacked that vehicle. So that's armed carjacking. That, that ain't a good kid. I mean, last time I checked, good kids don't pull guns on people and steal their cars. That's a thug. Thug. We're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those thugs. I know my 90s hip-hop fans get that reference. I know y'all do. Let's, uh, let's hit the Guns and Gear text line real quick. <laughs> uh, Keith on the Guns and Gear text line says, Gonna have to change the name from Save Jackson to Nuke Jackson. I'm gonna tell you what, I did come really, really close to changing it to Left Jackson. But the fact that I still call it Save Jackson makes the Democrat anger addicts so mad that a white guy, a white conservative has a page called Save Jackson that they just, they come unglued about it. And I frankly enjoy watching them come unglued just because. I mean, I bought the, URL, the website savejackson.com. I own every social media handle at savejxn. I mean, they can't even start. They can't, you know, they, they love to come in and they try to start these fake Save Jackson pages. And they're, they, they, they're good for about five or six posts. And then they just go away. Cause you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be passionate about this. The only thing they're passionate about is the destruction and death of the city. So they had to run back and get back to committing crimes and carjacking people and stuff of that nature. Screaming about racisms online. Uh, unknown texture says, that is funny AF. It, it is. It is. Roger on the Guns of Gear text line. Just when you train yourself not to be amazed by these idiots, this happens and your mouth drops and all you can do is shake your head. You know, one of the things I talk about a lot is I refuse I refuse to ever be numbed and normalize any of this stuff. I love having the bar of stupidity constantly raised. And these guys, like a great Olympian, like great athletes, like Barry Sanders, like Deion Sanders, like uh, Walter Payton, Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Carl Lewis, Muhammad Ali, they just find ways to excel and grab that golden ring and to constantly get better at what they do. Two stolen cars smashing into each other at one in the morning in the midst of a police chase. That's God's work. Hashtag God's plan. Y'all love to talk about God's plan. That's God's plan right there. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. King rules when necessary. That's what we do. I feel like we're breaking some rules this morning. I'm a habitual rule breaker, line stepper, high stepper, all that stuff. <clears throat> this segment gonna be brought to you by my friends out at Guns and Gear. Shout out to them for sponsoring the Guns and Gear text line. Y'all guys have been on fire this morning. All right, man, get out there and see them. Yandale Road, Highway 51 at Yandale Road. Go see them in person. Uh, closed on Mondays, but they'll be back open tomorrow. I'll be out there. Maybe, maybe not making a purchase. We'll see. I can't confirm nor deny. <laughs> they are the home of No Limit Ammo. Let's pull up their Facebook page here. Look at some of their recent deals of the day. Man, I got that uh, Magpul 12-gauge tactical shotgun the other day. Very, very happy with that thing. I got that uh, Taurus 9mm they were running those specials on. I mean, you can't beat some of this stuff. They got that Dickinson Commando 12 gauge, brand new for only 2 
forty nine. I, I, look, man, maybe I bought the wrong gun. I mean, that Magpul is nice, but goodness, it's uh, it. I can't tell a lick of difference between this and that Dickinson Commando twelve gauge for half the price. Let's see here. They got that TriStar Viper G2 12 gauge, 519. If you pay cash, only 499. They got the Six Sour P365X Macro 9mm. That's really what I need is a little tiny, little pocket one. 799. They go on and on, man. Go check out their Facebook page Guns and Gear. Just like Guns and Roses, but gear instead of roses. Shop them online, guns in, the letter N, gearms.com. They've always got some great ammo specials available, and you will not be disappointed when you shop locally with guns and gear. But, hey, man, they also buy guns. So instead of going to a pawn shop, go out there, see guns and gear. They'll buy your gun. They'll give you a fair market value for it. Or you can trade it in towards a new gun, whatever you prefer. Right out there at Guns and Gear. And they also offer gunsmithing and seracoding. All right, let's take a phone call here this morning. Hey, good morning. You're on there. Let's take a phone call here. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you're on there. Okay. What's up, Clay? Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm good this morning. How about yourself? Oh, let me turn on my volume because I can't hear you. I just wanted to call you and tell you what's up, old friend. What's going on? Who am I talking do you know to? Who I am? Do you know who I am? I do not. Pulliam. Who? Pulliam. Pulliam? Hey, Pulliam. Yeah, man. What's going on, man? Oh, man, just like your uh, show and just wanted to know that I'm listening. Brother, I appreciate it, man. You know, it's, it's it's great when I get new listeners, but it's always better when I get, you know, the old friends tune in. I love it. I love it, too. All right, brother. All right, take it easy. Be safe. Hey, Be you real. too. You too, brother. All right. Bet. Always good to hear from old folks like that, man. Good dude there. Greg Pulliam, man. I ain't talked to that dude in a while. Good stuff. My old Facebook page got deleted last year. And people I've been friends with on Facebook for 10, 13, 12 years, however long I've had it. You know, it's weird. You keep up with people like that. You kind of become dependent on that as your way of keeping up with people. And they delete your page because they're Marxist, communist, censorship-loving Nazis anti-science monkey bigot Nazis. Isn't that what Dr. Dobbs called us? Anyway, and you lose contact with people that you've been friends with forever. So, uh, good to hear from him. Hey, brother, send me a friend request on Facebook. Just go search Clay Edwards. I am there for now. I did catch a ban on my YouTube channel for two weeks. Um, there's a video that I posted on TikTok. It got, it got, it got, kicked, it got uh, deleted from there, too. But it is on Instagram and Facebook. And it is of, let's, I'm, I didn't even, I really wasn't even planning on talking about this today, but it's worthy of talking about. If you have kids in the car, uh, viewer discretion advised. Uh, viewer discretion advised. There was a video that surfaced Saturday. I don't know if it's from Friday or Saturday. From the corner of eight, Highway 80 and Ellis Avenue in Jackson, Mississippi. And if you don't think that there is absolute culture rot in these Democrat uh, urban cities, my friends, go to the Save Jackson Instagram or Facebook page and see uh, example A. There's these black girls on the roof on the roof of a car, and one of them has to weigh every bit of 350 pounds, and she's wearing some little little booty shorts. They may not have been little, but they were little on her anyway. And a, a and a sports bra, I guess. And she's on the roof of this car with another one hanging out one window and another one hanging out the other window. She's twerking. And one of the girls is spanking her booty in the process. Now, this is on the heels of the girl twerking on, the, twerking on Elmo at the family Fun carnival somewhere, I presume, Jackson. That video didn't get deleted off any of them. Anyway, I load this video onto YouTube yesterday as a YouTube short, thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot to put it on YouTube. It's on the Save Jackson Twitter also. I went wasn't up a minute and a half 
and it got deleted off YouTube. And I got a strike for violation of community standards. I take that. It, I felt like my community standards have been violated having to see it. So I completely understand that. So I thought, you know what? You're allowed to appeal these things. I mean, it's some sham appeal process. It never works. But I said, you know, they said, you can send them a message. And I said, I am a black trans gay woman or a gay black trans woman. And it is racially insensitive, bigoted, and transphobic, racist even, of you to take my videos down. I am just trying to support my heritage and show these people what we do. <laughs> they still appeal, they still rejected my appeal, even as a gay black trans woman. YouTube, bunch of bigots. So if you, if you follow this show on YouTube, um, uh, I will not, uh, you will not be seeing it for two weeks. <laughs> we have been put in YouTube jail. But that's fine. That's fine. It'd be like that sometimes. Oh, let's see. Let's hit the uh, Guns and Gear text line back up, man. See if you guys have said anything. Uh, Corey says, thugs. <laughs> John says, thugs of the day. Yeah, the the girl twerking on top of the car while getting spanked by the other girl. I mean, that's Black Spring Break level shenanigans. Just at the just at the red light, just at a random red light on the corner of Highway 80 and Ellis Avenue. If that if there was a more perfect red light to do that at than that one that just epitomizes the fall of the capital city, I can't think of one. You've got the old burned out Ramada. Southwest right there that the Hunt Club was in. Completely half burned to the ground. Caught on fire multiple times. Across the street, they just tore down the old Best Western with the indoor pool. Um, There's very few businesses left through there. It, it just epitomizes the fall of the capital city. As good and as well as any example I could have ever... I could have never even imagined getting the video of that. And some girls just happened to be a couple cars behind and filmed it. And I stole the crap out of it. I did. I stole that. And it's only a block away, actually. Because that wreck with the two stolen cars happened a block away at Ellis and Raymond Road. Right there uh, in front of the old sack and save, the New Horizon Church by Dairy Queen and all that. So literally, just the next red light down at Ellis and 80, you got these girls twerking on the roof of a vehicle. I saw a video last week of a girl at Black Spring Break twerking on the roof of an Altima. It's always an Altima. Twerking on the roof of an Altima, and the Altima had to hit its brakes, and she goes rolling down the front of it into the road. Oh, instant karma. Instant karma. I mean, is twerking like a nervous twitch for Democrat girls? Y'all do it in some really weird places. I see these videos pop up a lot of Democrats in these bigger cities like Chicago and New York and these real, real Democrat hellholes that white liberals actually still live into. And I go to attacking restaurant workers. And one of the things they do to mark their territory is they jump on the counter and they twerk as they're tearing things up. It's like, oh, but let me twerk first. Stick your hands up. It's a robbery. But first, let me twerk. Twerk something. Twerk something. The show is really going down the drain this morning. But these are some things I've been wanting to get off my chest for a while. If I'm getting canceled, I'm going down swinging. Wade says they're really scum on the dog, on the guns and gear text line. Almost said the dogs and suds text line. He uh, said something about dogs and suds the other day. Uh, somebody has sent me a YouTube video. Oh, it's other. It's other, some gun stuff. Um, let's see here. John says, "Heard the Capitals moving to Biloxi." Uh, Carl Ray says, "Was the red light working?" Doubt it. I don't know. Uh, unknown texture. No twerking on the interstate. But the, I did see another video, which I think was possibly down in Houston. 
it had a big it had big Houston vibes to it. Uh, there were some girls in a Honda Accord, like four or five of them, twerking on the roof of that car going down the interstate in traffic. Of course, the guys beside them filming it, trying to get him to go back to his place. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hot. Come holler at me. Come see me. Thomas, was that you? They weren't white girls, so it probably wasn't. Oh, man. Twerking on the roof of the car. At the one of the deadliest intersections in the city. Between... At least once a week, there's some gunfire. There's a Jasco gas station right there. That should really tell you all you need to know. There's a Jasco right there with a lick of stow in it. People get shot at that red light intersection all the time. There's car wrecks at that intersection all the time. I remember when we were kids, my dad had that store on Lynch Street, and we lived right around the corner there when it was still a good area or a better area anyway. And we're sitting there at the red light and some van came off the interstate and they never checked up. But they rear-ended us going every bit of 60 miles an hour. We went straight across the intersection. Thank God we didn't get T-boned going across. We probably got killed. But uh, we got a bad, bad wreck right there when I was like 12 years old or so. Still got back problems from that wreck. Still got a sciatic nerve. There's a lightning bolts down the back of my leg from that wreck. All right. Let's take a break real quick. Come back. I do actually have some more things I want to discuss. I want to talk about this subway incident in New York. I also want to talk about ABC News. Are they done with Biden? Are the are the are the Democrats done with Biden? We got a whole nother hour to go. We got to close this one out first. This is the Clay Edwards Show on 1039 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Hey, if you're gonna order any food today beer or liquor check out take a break deliveries take a break deliveries.com locally owned veteran owned food and alcohol delivery service you can also download their app just go search take a break deliveries on the google play store or the apple app store itunes app store whatever they call it now like i have they send out daily push notifications uh if you sign up for those with promo codes to save money but I got you a promo code right here, all caps, CLAY601. You can support three locally owned businesses in one fell swoop by using Take a Break Deliveries. Most of their restaurants on there are locally owned. That's right. Most of the restaurants there are locally owned. And, of course, they are locally owned. And, of course, I am locally owned. I'm owned by you guys. It would be no me if it was not for you. So check them out. Get food delivered for lunch or dinner, take a break deliveries, and use the promo code CLAY601. You're going to get $5 off your delivery fee. You can't go wrong with that. I love a good discount, and I love good fresh hot food. And they got a ton of healthy options on there, too. I mean, you got to know where to get them from, but, man, they got some good healthy options. They got some great pizza places, including Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's, another one of our sponsors here. Heck, you can support three Clay Edwards Show sponsors in one fell swoop. Me, Clay Edwards. By using our promo code, Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's, and Take a Break Deliveries. And all that matters. I mean, we talk about this stuff. We talk about you guys supporting these sponsors and these sponsors supporting us because that's how we stay on the air here. We don't get any government funding. You know how I can get on here and I'm allowed to talk about girls twerking on the roof and the culture rot in these black Democrat cities? It's because you support us. You support these sponsors. You're not going to hear this on any other radio station in town. They're going to gloss over it. They're going to pretend that whatever's going on in Jackson is because of white supremacy, white flight, and racism. You're not going to hear those lies told to you on WYAB. And that's because we're not government funded. We don't get any taxpayer money. Not a penny of taxpayer dollars go to support this station. So support these sponsors, man. They support us. Even if they're not Clay Edwards Show sponsors, they're James and Haygood sponsors, Kim Wade sponsors. Jim Thorne sponsors, Mike Madison sponsors. Get out there and support these. When you hear those commercials on this radio station, support those sponsors. And uh, all that, that's more important than listening. (laughs) All right, man, we'll be right back. Got a whole other hour to go this morning. Tons of national topics. 
All right, welcome back in. It's hour two of your daily dose of reality radio, the free range human show of choice, the realest show on radio, the Clay Edwards show. I'm, of course, Clay Edwards. And, you know, one of the things I just heard there in my intro, it's one of my favorite lines that I pooped out on accident, was you positive solutions only people never have any positive solutions. I'm not seeing too many positive solutions. That's what they told me in Jackson when when I started the Save Jackson page. They said, you're not allowed to talk about what's going on around here unless you got a hashtag positive solutions only. Sometimes you got to be negative. But I got a guy on the phone here who is doing something. He's got some positive solutions for our hometown of Brandon, Mississippi. He has taken a development, uh, Stonebridge, and he is a... Getting it back, uh, getting it back on the market, doing some, building some new houses over there. I've got Brad Burleson with U List Realty. Brad, what's up, brother? Morning, buddy. How are you? Just uh, enjoying this great Monday. Man, me too. Me too. You know, I, I feel like, well, in a very comical sense, I feel a bit like a marine. The old uh, marine does more by six a.m. than the, most of you will do all day. That's that's how I feel by the time I lift this radio show. Sometimes, minus all the you know the the dying for my country and physical stuff, but having to get up and drive to floor anyway. You know, so hey, man. Look, all joking aside, um, what you're doing out there at Stonebridge is really cool, man. I rode through there the other day. I was not familiar with this neighborhood. I'd never been back there, but it's just right around the corner from my house in downtown Brandon. So I was like, hey, let me let me go check this thing out. Man, that bridge, that stone bridge, literally going into it, is phenomenal, and it's just a beautiful neighborhood. Really nice homes, and uh, tell us what you're doing over there. Yeah, so. I get to be the voice of it. There's a lot of great folks that have been able to pull this together. Um, kind of the history of, of that development, it was a prominent uh, development 10, 12 years ago. I mean, it was going to be Rankin County flagship for that area. And it's got a school, school named after it right in front of it. So that's your elementary school. That's Stonebridge Elementary. At the time, Brandon High School was not where it is, but you could throw a rock to it from the neighborhood now on 18 there. And you could walk there, ride, ride your bike there, whatever. Correct. So uh, the long and short of it is developers, kinda, they kind of, it wasn't a financial jam by any means. They kind of got into a, uh, a contest back and forth legally with some folks, and I got to give it to them. They stuck the course. Uh, the original developer that had this vision was able to get this back going. Uh, we were able to partner with them and take over the building side of it. We have Clark Builders involved that's going to be putting the homes up. I, again, I get to be the, the voice and, and meet all the folks and kind of get the face of it, but I want to make sure they get their kudos. So cool. what we kept seeing is – And I'm talking everyone was coming to us saying, where are the houses that we can have our downsize house or our starter homes, that 1,500 square foot? And there's just nowhere around, whether you're talking Madison, Rankin, whatever. And uh, that's that's what we're kicking off here. So we have a limited availability out there, three-bedroom, four-bedroom homes, new construction. Get in early enough. You can pick your granite colors, your floor colors, your paint colors, all that stuff. And uh, these homes are starting at 275000 Man, you can't beat that. You know, fifteen hundred to a lot of people that might not sound like that may not sound big, but I'm telling you, my my house in downtown Brandon is about fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred square feet. I live there by myself most of the time, and I I, I use like half of that house. Fifteen hundred square feet is plenty of space, especially when when the floor plan is laid out properly on a nice lot. Um, yeah, the, we have spent when I say hours, I'm talking hours with architects just engineering these plans so that they get the most bang for their buck. And I always start out with the 1500 because that's what folks are kind of attracted to as price points. But we got 15, 16, 17, they'll go all the way up to 1900. Um, when we talk about interest rates where they are now, I think at Friday they closed at six and a half. It, it's all about payments. Um, that's, that's kind of the name of the game and what we can squeeze into your budget. And that's what we're trying to build to. Man, we're seeing the same thing in the car business, you know, with rates where they are and you, you hit the nail on the head right there is it is, I, p- people are payment buyers right now more than I have seen in my 12 years in the car business. It, it is all about the payment. It's not the bottom dollar is not the most important part. It is term and payment. Yeah. And if you've looked at apartment rents, we can get you a house for the same that you're paying for an apartment in, in Brandon. And you, know, you kind of skimmed over it. All that Brandon has to offer, that is what we're so proud to be a part of in Rankin County. This neighborhood itself has amenities. You've got pools. You have a pool, you have playground, um, fitness center, clubhouse. It, it is all in the neighborhood there for you. Um, very manageable to get to I-20 in the morning. Like, just convenience is king around there. 
Yeah, no, no doubt. I was just about to bring up, get you to mention the amenities there. When I rode through, the playground really jumped out at me. I was like, man, if I was a kid, I would have torn that thing up. I mean, in a good way. I'd have been out there just on that deal every morning on the weekends and the afternoons, the whole nine yards. And, you know, you talk about Brandon. I, look, I was a South Jackson guy through and through, 43 of my 45 years. People are tired of hearing it. I've been in Brandon. I've been a Brandonian for two years, a year in Cross Gates, and I've been in, in downtown Brandon for almost a year. And, man, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else at this point. The amenities, the amphitheater is a stone's throw from downtown or, or and Stonebridge. And, I mean, you got five minutes. They just announced a big Hardy Laney Wilson concert this morning. There's so much to constantly do out there. Uh, you've got that new development coming in down there uh, by Home Depot. It's going to be more shopping, more restaurants, the whole nine yards. you got downtown Brandon with the gallows and burgers and blues and the pizza shack and just – you, you you literally do not have to leave the Brandon area. And soon you're, well, you don't have to leave Rankin County. And soon you're not going to have to leave the, the Cross Gates area to do anything you want to do when this new development gets finished. It, it's, it's great out there. I can't say enough. Yeah, and for the numbers, guys, it's kind of a convoluted situation where when you come in, you're in the city of Brandon proper. But as you get over the bridge, you go into Rankin County, that's brand, uh, excuse me, Rankin taxes. So your tax base is actually a little lower than you would expect there. Um, man, I think we, we have already had a phenomenal interest level in this. We've got several under contract already. We're really just starting to get the word out. So if folks are interested in a home starting at $275,000, I, I would love to sit down and talk with them. We'll look at the floor plans. We've got several they can choose from. They can basically pick their plan, pick their lot, and uh, we'll be having folks move in in July. That's our goal. Our first home is going to be finished and closed in July, and we'll kind of start setting dates from that date. Hey, let me ask this. I didn't realize that was the county. So is that, is that still in the Brandon High School District? Yes. That's interesting. I, it, it is not like that where I grew up. <laughs> well, cool. That is good to know. Brad, how can everybody get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, first of all, our phone number is 601-832-2020. That's 601-832-2020. And then website's always going to have the information. It's ulist, the letter U-L-I-S-T-M-S dot com. Uh, we are building a Stonebridge page specifically. You'll link off of there just to kind of get your info. But again, at this kind of infancy of the, the construction itself, there are a couple homes you can walk through. There is only a limited amount of these homes at that price point. So I would jump in quick. But what I'm getting to is I would love to sit down with you. We might start at my office. That'd be the first place to show you the floor plans, to show you kind of the layout, and then also the color schemes that you can pick from. And then we go to the neighborhood and let you look at the lots. So if you go out there now, just just expect to see it's almost a war zone. It is construction going on everywhere you look. Yeah, it, it is. When we rode through the other day, I think it was last Tuesday when I was off when I rode through, um, I noticed all the construction. I mean, and the – just because there hasn't been a lot of construction back there the last 10 or 12 years, it's not grown up. It's, I mean, it's been taken care of. It's been maintenance. There's a lot of houses back there, a lot of hustle and bustle. It's just a beautiful area. I love the boulevard. It's very walkable, and I think that's one of the things, right? And that's one of the selling points. There's sidewalks. It's walkable. The traffic's not congested. you got that nice, beautiful boulevard leading to the stone bridge. you got roundabouts. you got all that stuff. It's really set up very nice back there, and um, it, somebody's going to get them a nice home. Yeah, I can't speak enough to the developments or their, their view 10 years ago. This was definitely money well spent as a predominant development. And the ones that are going in now, you just don't see a lot of that forethought. You don't see the investment in the entrances like that. This is something that we, we saw as a slam dunk, being able to pick up on the back end, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Again, with uh, the development team, the building team, we're all thankful to be here. Yeah, look, if you guys want to ride through out there, get an idea of what we're talking about, you just go down, take the cross gates exit at uh, all of I-20, go right down 18, past the Pepsi, uh, past Brown Bottling and all that going. What, what, what would that be going, east or is that north? Man, don't give me the line, but I do believe it is east. Yeah, I mean, it feels east. Anyway, you take the down, you take uh, the cross gates exit, go right, go over the railroad tracks, you'll pass Brandon High School, and you'll see an uh, entrance into Stone Bridge right there. Right through there. Check it out, man. It's a beautiful construction going on. Uh, Brad, we appreciate you, brother, and uh, we'll be doing this at least once a week, giving people, giving people an update of what's going on and uh, talking about it a good bit here on the show. Yeah, the last two things, like, the easiest way for me, I tell folks all the time, put in your GPS, Stonebridge Elementary, that map dot will take you right there to the entrance of it. Uh, we'll talk next week, kind of tell you, but we got two homes right now that are starting to be sheetrocked, so you'll really get a feel of it, and we'll kind of bring you through that phase next week of what's coming next on it. All right, brother, we appreciate you. Let me know if you have any updates. Thanks, boss. See you guys. All right, stay safe. All right, that's Brad Burleson with U-List 
Realty. You may remember remember Brad. He was on our show here before, uh, on our Testimonial Tuesday show, talking about some family members and uh, addiction and whatnot. So uh, Brad's no stranger to the Clay Edwards Show. We appreciate those guys coming on board. I tell you what, let's just end this segment at, on that, and we'll come back and pick up with some culture war stuff. I want to talk about this uh, this mall shooting in Houston. I want to talk about ABC News appearing to give, give some real polling data. And uh, it doesn't look good for Joe Biden. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show, live here in the com studios. And as I peruse through Twitter during the break here, I just stumbled across some, some sort of black girl fight. Um, It just says, good morning, Wakanda. Imagine believing we can fix this. Hashtag patterns matter. Um, I, I can't begin to describe what I'm watching here, but I did just retweet it. If you want to see this nonsense, go to the Save JXN Twitter page. And we, we're so screwed. I don't, I don't even know why we're fighting for anymore. I just want to be right. That's the only reason. I, I don't believe we can save or salvage any of this. I believe what we've allowed to happen, unchecked, it's celebrated even. In these urban Democrat communities like Jackson, Mississippi, Atlanta, Georgia, Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, New Orleans, Louisiana, Chicago, Illinois, so on and so forth. We have left these folks with their own demise, their own devices, and gone unchecked for too long and bought into the racial, social justice, civil rights nonsense. That era is long gone. What, whatever the, the money that the government's been sending these people for their, for their uh, nonprofits and their grants and all this stuff is clearly not being used properly. And they have, it is a complete third world country in these places. I, I just build a damn wall around it. Just build a wall around it. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you, Obama. Uh, I don't. Where do we all want to start? The, let's start with this Joe Biden polling stuff. It's quasi entertaining because ABC News actually had to tell the dang truth for once. Who's calling? Let, let Let's take a call first. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey, Clay, it's Ready Teddy. What's going on, man? Hey, brother, how you doing? Man, I'm out pretty good. You know, I, I went to New Orleans last week, and I've already discussed on the show how I'm going to live my life, and that's the reason to rehash that. But um, I like to get to a different place and meet new people every time I go down there. And I went to a little local neighborhood bar, and I was talking to the bartender who was also, I think, part owner is kind of the vibe I got. And I was asking him, you know, is this crime hurting out down here? And and, 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 it, and it was a, you know, it was a black person, and it was in a, you know, a, a predominantly black area, but um, but I sat there and I ate some food. Everything's great, and they said the problem is once it becomes a way of life, that like, that criminal activity, it's it's really hard to turn back from that. I mean, once once they just accept this is the world we live in, this is how it is, and this is what we're going to do. It's um, she said it. She just doesn't think there's any 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 way to turn around after it's gotten that far. I agree. I mean, it, it, it's too far gone. You've got, you've got two entire generations of people, your 20 plus year olds and your, and your generation behind them that have never lived a law abiding life. Right. I, I mean, you, you no, no, no structure is what I'm saying. Maybe law abiding isn't the way it's, it's a life of basically zero structure. That's right. She, she said, or she discipline. Said, you said we would be, we would, you know, you know, open our mouth or wide and be like, what? When, like if somebody got robbed or shot or something. And once you lose that surprise factor of that happening, it's become a way of life. And it's, 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 she said she thinks it's impossible to turn back from. That's why I refuse to normalize this stuff. It's why we're going to talk about girls twerking on the roofs of cars. We're going to talk about stolen cars smashing into each other. I mean, admittedly, there is a little entertainment value to the to the shock and awe of all of it. But I wish it would all go away and there was no need for a Clay Edwards show. I agree. One more thing. Well, you know, about the entertainment value, you know, I'm a very compassionate person, no matter who the person is. It's, I'm, I'm just, my heart goes out to the hardworking people in South Jackson that, 
you know, over there off Ellis Avenue that have paid for their homes and they can't get their money out of their homes and they're just kind of forced to live out their retirement days in, in that area. Yeah, I, mean, I, a- I sold a car to an older couple that lives uh, right on, I think, Gibraltar. The street It was the street right beside Castile that I grew up on. Older black couple, and uh, they they were fans of the show and fans of the Save Jackson page, and it and, and they they're scared to speak out publicly because they feel like they'll be retaliated against if they do anything, and and I get that, and I I I do t- tend to forget that aspect of it sometimes, but every dang now and then, man, you got to fight back. Hey, I don't know if I mentioned this. To you. Did did I read correctly that less than fifty percent of Jackson homicides are science, uh, solved? I, I, yeah, that's correct. It's, it's some it's some astonishing number, and they they brag about how many that they solve per detective. Well, they only have like two or three homicide detectives, so of course their caseload is extremely high. So they're going to solve more, but still percentage wise, it's terrible. Right. And, and it's not that that is not a shot at the detectives that are solving yeah. these crimes. By the way, good on them. It's a shot at. The, the infrastructure and how few they have. I want to make sure Hold I on. say that right. But it's all it's also a shot at the, I'm sorry to say, a shot at the community for not providing information when they know who did it. Absolutely. And, and that goes back to what we just said, the fear of retaliation. That's real. When, when you live in a lawless community, thugs can just retaliate without any consequences or repercussions. Yeah, and, you know, if you provide information to the police when somebody's lost their life, that's not snitching. That's That's... That's what that's your human duty to do that. Yep. I right, appreciate it, man. All right, brother. Love you. Stay, stay safe. Thank you, Ready Teddy. All right, so it, I want to add something here. So I just shared this video on the Twitter of the of the, of the black girls fighting, and I said, you know, I don't care where this happened at. It could have just as easily been Jackson, Mississippi. And one of my Twitter, one of my outside agitators on Twitter. Don the Playboy Wonder. Don Juan the Playboy Wonder. He's a good follower. I like him. Because or Trailer Park in Rankin County or Simpson County. But it wasn't. You know what I mean? I, we don't see a lot of we don't see those videos surface. It's always just these videos of a rotten culture in a Democrat city. And like Teddy just said, man, it's just this culture of crime and no snitching. And I get it. Rod will call in here and say, you know, we handle our own business. You know, we don't snitch. You should. Let's go to this video I've been teasing here. This is uh, ABC News. Finally jumping the shark. It's about three and a half, almost four minutes long. So just bear with me. We're going to end this segment on this. Absolutely, George. And you talked earlier about that record low approval rating for President Biden. It's actually six points down just since February. And the skepticism over his leadership extends deep inside his own party. Only 36 percent of Democrats think that their party should nominate Joe Biden for a second term. Fifty eight percent say they would uh, support someone else or prefer someone else. That's despite the fact that the entire DNC, most of the Democratic establishment has rallied behind President Biden. And you're seeing real weaknesses in the coalition that powered Joe Biden to the presidency back in in 2020. Biden carried independence by 13 points against Donald Trump. He is now trailing Trump by nine points among those same voters. He carried black voters by 75 points in 2020. Now he is up just 35. That may sound like a lot, but. Yeah, but see now, the blacks have turned their backs on Biden. Ruh, ruh. Time to go. Time to go find another George Floyd to blame on Trump. The fact of the matter is, in modern politics, that is not the kind of number that a Democrat needs to be victorious. And then, of course, that that does spill over into the head-to-head matchup, the hypothetical rematch, Trump versus Biden. Right now, a seven-point edge in our poll from uh, in Trump leading Biden. And and, and in fact, Trump is leading Biden 49 to 42 percent, by the way, in this hypothetical poll on ABC News. It's an identical number with Ron DeSantis in a head-to-head that might happen next November. That tells us at this very early stage, George, that this race is shaping up a lot more about the incumbent president. Anybody but Biden. Anybody but Biden. Joe Biden than it is about any of his challengers. And this is interesting because 
all, despite all of that, despite the strength that we're seeing for Donald Trump right now, a, a strong majority of Americans think he should be facing criminal charges across a range of investigations, including on this one, 56 percent say that he should face charges over his attempts to overturn the 2020 election. What's interesting to me about this, George, is that even among that 56 percent, the people that think that, yes, Trump should face criminal charges, 18 percent say they would vote for Donald Trump over Joe Biden anyway. That- so, so 18 percent of the 56 percent who think Trump should face criminal charges for questioning the Democrats um, still said they would vote for him over Biden. That is a, that is phenomenal. That is absolutely. I, I was watching Salty Cracker last night. He played this video and I had to go find it. When I saw that number right there, the 18 percent of people who think Trump should be arrested would still vote for him over Biden. Let's continue this. That tells you a lot about Trump's potential strength, but maybe more than that, some of Biden's weaknesses. And that question of age that that you mentioned earlier that Joe Biden has been trying to address. Donald Trump is, is less than four years younger than Joe Biden, but the concerns over Biden's age are much more significant. 68% of voters say they think that Joe Biden is too old for an additional term. Only 44% say the same about Donald Trump. Rick, I got to admit, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. You've got one in five people who say they believe President Trump should be fa- should face criminal charges, but they'd still vote for him. It, it is it is remarkable, and I do think once there's a matchup with an actual person, maybe that changes. But that just tells you about how much Trump is kind of baked into the political equation. That is phenomenal. That video is not quite as long as I thought it was. <laughs> what do y'all think? Phone lines wide open, man. Six zero one eight seven nine zero zero zero. To, let's take an early break real quick because I just want to come back and reset and start a new topic. But you're welcome to call in on that one. 601-879-0002. The Guns of Gear text line 769-241-1944. We'll be right back on The Clay Edwards Show live on 103.9 WYAB. And rules when necessary. Welcome back into The Clay Edwards Show. Hey, man, shout out to my old buddy, Rusty. He just texted in on the Guns of Gear text line. Let me know that he went out to Kelly's Greens and got his uh, Mississippi medical marijuana work permit taken care of uh, Saturday at their job fair. Don't forget, man, they are hiring there at Kelly's Green, but you got to get that Mississippi medical marijuana workers permit. They can assist you with that. They're at Kelly's Green Incorporated. You can find them on Facebook. Get in touch with them there. Uh, just a little free plug there. Um, This segment. It's going to be brought to you by a Jackson tradition. I've had so much fun reading these. You're going to hear them every day. Every day, leading up to Mother's Day. Carter Jewelers. I can't help it. I cannot help but do my best Jerry Lake impression when I get to read Jerry Lake's script. How cool is that? I'm pinching myself. I feel like I've made it. But uh, late last year, Carter Jewelers bought the largest diamond purchase they've ever made in their 173-year history. Jerry Lake, the owner of Carter Jewelers, personally selected every piece of that diamond jewelry from the world's biggest diamond jewelry manufacturer at extreme closeout prices. Now, Carter Jewelers is having an incredible clearance sale offering sales prices on his on this jewelry that are untouchable. Prices are marked down up to 70% off store-wide. On top of these insane low prices, they are still going to celebrate their annual balloon pop promotion. Here's how the balloon pop works. After you've made your jewelry selection, you pick and pop a balloon. Inside the balloon will be an extra discount voucher for up to 30% off. Every jewelry purchase includes a complimentary lunch for two at Hallamow's, a Jackson tradition. But hey, did you know they're under new ownership? That's right. Chef Damien is the new owner. Carter Jewelers offers 12 months interest-free financing and no credit check financing. Trade-ins are welcome. Carter Jewelers is located in Jackson on High Street, two blocks from the Capitol, and on Pemberton Plaza in Vicksburg. The sale ends Mother's Day Eve. Get out there and get huge discounts on everything in the store from Carter Jewelers. Ain't no man. Look, they're easy to find. Get off at the High Street exit. Go towards State Street. Boom. They're on the left. of State and, State and High, basically. Right there. You can't miss it. Been there forever, ever. All right, that Joe Biden stuff is interesting. Uh, let's read a couple texts real quick, and then I want to, I want to get into uh, 
I tell you what, it actually um looks like we for the most part cleared out the text. So the guns of your text line is wide open, seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. Phone line six oh one eight seven nine zero 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 two. So I did a emergency broadcast, an emergency podcast Saturday afternoon. You can go find it. Just go search Clay Edwards Show. It, it for whatever reason, it's on YouTube also. Last thing I posted before I got banned. It did not it does not push over to Spotify when I downloaded the video file. So if you listen on Spotify, you'll have to go to one of the other platforms to find it. But I brought this matter up. I, I'm I'm tired of tiptoeing around this this subject. And this is the kind of stuff that's waking up normies. Is when is it okay to mention that a criminal was black? And when is it okay to mention that a criminal was white? Or better yet, when is it okay to mention race at all in a, in a story? Good, bad, other. And I've been doing this long enough that I realized. Because I, so I, what, what prompted this, this uh, conversation was I, I woke up Saturday morning and I had three different breaking news alerts on my phone from the previous evening, Friday, about mass shootings at nightclubs in Mississippi. We discussed that in the first segment of the show. There were three mass shootings, 12 people, well, three are dead, 12 more have been shot. So a total of 15 people got shot, three have died. All black nightclubs, all black shooters, all black uh, victims. You say, well, Clay, how do you know they're black? The news hasn't said that. You know they're black because they haven't announced who, they haven't shown you who the shooters are. The second it's a white dude, it is a news story. It's a national news story. You haven't heard a word about this. That's how I know they're white. Got me to thinking. And, and, that, and that angered the natives, too. That, 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 that did not go over well on my Facebook and Instagram. Folks were mad that I mentioned black. So I got to think, well, when is it okay to mention race? But here's, here's when it's okay to mention black and when it's not okay. It's okay to mention black when they're the first to do something, when they win something, when they get an award, a scholarship, when they're wronged by a white person, or beat or killed by the police. That's when it's okay to mention somebody's black. When it's not okay to mention somebody's black is when they do anything wrong, period. Now let's, now let's move over to when it's okay and not okay to mention somebody's white. When it's okay to mention somebody's white, when they do anything wrong and or racially discriminate or commit an act uh, of anything, aggression, towards somebody black or really any minority, not just black, but especially black. When is it okay to mention somebody's white? Well, that's what I, that's what I just said. That yeah. When is it not okay to mention somebody's white? When they open a business, when they win something, when they do anything good, when there's a act of racial discrimination against them, when there's an act of aggression or violence against them, you can't mention that the victim was white. You can't mention that the success story was because of somebody's because. Well, you can't, not because they're white, but you can't mention they're white, which is ridiculous anyway. You shouldn't. It sounds ridiculous when you say white owned, white victim, but it sounds equally ridiculous when you do it when somebody's black, but it's only okay to do it when somebody's black. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So until we eliminate this racial double standard, the Democrat double standard, this country can never think about coming together. People are fed up. You overplayed your hand post-George Floyd with the Black Lives Matter hustle, the grift, calling everybody racist. You overplayed your hand. People are fed up. People are fed up. I got people reach out to me all the time, black and white, liberal and, and Republican. 
that quietly tell me they're Clay Edwards fans. They appreciate what I say. Even if they don't always agree with me, they appreciate stuff like this very topic right here. But man, when you're right, you're right. Now, there's a bunch of just dying the wool Democrats, you know, militant, black for a living folks, purple haired white liberals, all them. They'll never say that. They can't. It goes against their, their religious beliefs because social justice is a religion to these folks. They have replaced God with woke. It is a religion. And it's destroying this country. You know, we were always worried about Satan, Satanism and Satan. But he, he wears a new, he's not, he doesn't have a red cape and a red tail and red horns. He has purple hair and a Black Lives Matter shirt on. And he wants to transition your children from boys to girls, from girls to boys. He wants to take God out of everything. That is who we are fighting against now. He wants to make everything black and white. Hell, black isn't even the largest minority group in America. Spaniards are. Am I saying that right? I, mean, I, I worked with a Mexican dude for a while, and he jokingly called himself a Spaniard all the time, so it just kind of stuck. I don't mean no harm by that. It's funny to me. Hispanic. I sold some Hispanic dudes. I met some Mexican dudes a truck on Cinco de Mayo. That was cool. I wanted to cut out with them and go drink some beers. It was just too early in the day. They're the largest minority group in America. It's going to be interesting to see how the Democrats play this. Because I think this... I think the Hispanic demo has gotten fed up with the Democrat Party and this love affair with the black community and the crime that they keep the crime that they keep turning their heads to because a lot of these Hispanics and blacks share share these communities together and I know that this guy that committed this uh, mass shooting in Texas the other day was a was a Hispanic white supremacist apparently that's is that the is that the story they're running with a hispanic white supremacist i saw another story on info wars i'm bouncing around a little bit here kind of tying all this together somewhat i saw another story on info wars earlier i didn't clicked off of it that says the cartels are about to start committing terror acts in america well yeah, that got me to thinking what if that what what if that uh you know talk about false flag that 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 Dylan Allen Texas reeks a false flag. I'm not necessarily saying it was a set up by the government, but it could have been. But they said they said this they said this illegal alien has on a white supremacy patch and goes and shoots up this mall. Well, okay. Well, if I'm a cartel, if I'm a terrorist organization, what would I do? I'd make somebody go do that and make, blame it on white supremacy and get these folks to fight amongst one another. That sounds like something the devil would do. I love playing that Paul Harvey thing, if I were the devil. It just gets more and more relevant in every passing day. So we're, so we're supposed to believe that a, that a Mexican white supremacist shot up that mall. Let's take a call. Hey, brother, you're on there. Hey, Clay. I was hoping you'd call. You got about three minutes for the break. Well, the devil still wears a suit and tie. And he's got a badge that says CIA or FBI or uh, or CNN or ABC, CBS. And these little blue-haired Karens are um, these social justice, Black Lives Matter. These are just peons and useful idiots. They do the bidding for those people wearing the suit and tie. And and they're involved in both the Democrat and the Republican side. They're they're uh, they've got Mitch McConnell hands tied. He's part of it. I mean the thing is so much bigger than DNR. You know. Absolutely. Just kinda you know, want to throw that out in a little three minutes I had, you know. Well, he you know, wears a suit and tie. I heard him talking uh, about- I heard him talking. Well, on, I heard him talking. He's on, extremely powerful. 
I heard him talking on Steven Detroska's show this morning, and he was say, talking about um, De- Philip Gunn was going to throw a fundraiser for that girl who had who had le- on the state uh, re- representative who had left the Democrat Party. She, I guess, she represents like that Northeast Jackson area, and she had become an independent. So Philip was going to throw her a, a fundraiser. Now she's still pro pro baby killing and all that. And then uh, the, cons- uh, the the Freedom Caucus found out and called him out on it, and he he canceled it. And so like, well, I was just throwing throwing a fundraiser for a friend. Well, she was just a Democrat last week, and she ain't changed her Democrat ways. And to your point, it's a uniparty. It is bigger than DNR. That was just that made me think about that. Yeah. So I mean, we also have to think. On a positive note, if evil is that real and and that horrific and that demonic, then God is equally real with good. And, you know, sometimes justice is slow, uh, but it, it's always there. And, and a lot of these people, they may not see justice till the other side, uh, but I hate to be in their shoes when they're on the other side. So just, just wanted to throw that out there, brother. Hey, real quick before you hang up, I want to... Uh i got about a minute left, minute and a half. What are your thoughts on this New York subway deal, man? You following this? This Jordan Neely deal? No, I think I've missed that one. All right, I'm going to hang up, and I'm going to talk about it real quick before the break. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Right, bye-bye. All right, so I know a lot of you guys are following this. The, the, this crackhead, I mean, I'm just use crackhead as a catch-all for trash, had been arrested 40-something times. And was actually had actually tried to kidnap a seven year old girl and was out on bond or cashless bond or something. Admittedly, I don't read a whole lot about it. I've watched the video. He's threatening people on a subway train. And he's a piece of trash, and he's spitting on people and all this stuff. Well, a marine subdues him, you know, because he, he's threatening to hurt people. The guy dies. No charges were pressed. Even in New York, they didn't feel the need to press charges. Well, Ocasio-Cortez sees the video and says, this is a cold-blooded murderer. And now they're about to, they they are setting New York on fire, and I am here to watch it burn. You get what you do. Breaking rules are necessary. Welcome back into the Quay Edwards Show. Um, In closing, a really good show today, I think. The podcast will be available here shortly, within the hour at clayedwardsshow.com and wherever you download or stream podcast at Clay Edwards Show. Again, we're on a two-week hiatus from YouTube, so I'll be posting on the Rumble page. I may use my backup YouTube. I don't know. I'm about over it, but I just keep fighting the fight. I just saw something a second ago, and it made me think about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu South and, uh, and Pearl. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu South kickboxing and Jiu-Jitsu uh, in Madison and in Pearl. You need to get over there. Get that week for free and uh, take advantage of that 20% off of being a Clay Edwards Show listener because you may end up in a street fight with Mark Zuckerberg over him putting us in Facebook jail and stuff. And I, I just saw this. Mark Zuckerberg, on his Facebook, I share this to mine, competed in his first jiu-jitsu tournament and won some medals for the Gorilla Jiu-Jitsu team. Thank you to Dave Camarillo, Kai Wu, and James Terry for training me. Mark Zuckerberg is now a jiu-jitsu champion, and you can be too. Get over to Gracie South Jiu-Jitsu and Kickboxing. Check out GracieSouth.com. They offer uh, adult jiu-jitsu classes taught by Hoist Gracie Black Belt Chance Shepard. They offer kids kickboxing. They offer women's uh, women's self-defense classes taught by a uh, taught by a female instructor. And of course, they have fitness kickboxing available also. Located at their their studio there in Madison on Ridgecrest Ave and uh, in Fairmont Plaza on Pearl, in Pearl. Check out GracieSouth.com. Or you might get beat up talking about Zuck. He is, in fact, a jiu-jitsu champion now. And I never felt less manly than I do right now. I'm going to go do some push-ups, drink some Coors Light, do something. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be back in here. Therese will be with me. Going to be a fun show. Going to be a good week of shows this week. Wednesday with Sean. Uh, Thursday's wide open. And uh, Friday probably with Sean, too. Y'all stay safe. Stay blessed. See you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9. 
WYAB.